everyone, I am Bets Gold and thank you so much for joining me today. I actually am here to show you how you can break the color family rules, mm, not really, using your Distress Oxides uh, sprays in your art journal or anywhere you want to create a background. I like the Distress Oxide sprays for big coverings because you literally can spray instead of trying to blend all day. And I'm going to show you five different color combinations with all the Distress Oxides that I own. I only own 15 of them at this point because these are the colors that I use that can create beautiful backgrounds for you in your art journal. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I need to do is find a blank page. I'm gonna just build on this because, you know, that's fun. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Distress Oxide Sprays. We're gonna start off with making the color of Sin um, as our first one. I mean, why not, right? And we're gonna do something kind of different with this in the sense that we're gonna actually use some spray-on sealer with Mod Podge at the end of each of this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually start at the top and just spray down one color. And then on the bottom, you're gonna spray the contrasting color. And I'm using um, Picky Raspberry, Salty Ocean, and then this is um, Seedless Preserve. Now you're gonna make a mess. And in fact, I want to kind of protect that just a little bit. So I am going to slide my handy dandy uh, baking sheet under it. I like to use this because it's nice and cheap. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that out. And then in the middle, I'm going to hit it with, the, if the colors were to combine, it would create that, a purple. And then what you wanna do is you do wanna heat set it just a little bit. Heat set it, I'm just using my Heat It Craft It tool um, because I don't really wanna blow the water all, or blow the ink all around like my embossing gun would do. You guys, it took me like two years to buy this thing. I had been looking at it and I was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it. I use this little puppy so much more than I use my embossing gun. It is crazy. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time, doing the same thing, just to get a really pretty coverage. And after this, I'm going to hit it with my heat tool again and you know go through and if you see where it's empty or you want a little bit more of that color just keep hitting it until you get the right vibrancy that you're looking for so from here i'm just going to hit it one more time with this and i'm going to get it almost dry but not all the way dry because i actually am going to use my mod podge ultra as two things I'm going to use it to seal it in and give it back some of that luster. And I'm also going to use it as if I were to put water down on it and get it to move kind of like you do with the chalky. Um, it, it, you know, when you, when distress oxide gets wet, it gets chalky. And so I do want a little bit of that in this. So I'm drying most of it, but I'm leaving some of the spots wet. So I'm just going to come in with my Mod Podge gloss, um, um, gloss Ultra. So this is gonna leave a glossy finish and I'm just going to hit it through like so. And that is going to make it all move and seal it in so I am free to work on top of it. And look at that interact with the, the Distress Oxide. I don't know if you can see it moving, but it's really, really pretty. And it's just interacting and just leaving a beautiful finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this and then we'll move on to our next color combination. And that it's like, can you believe that that was with Distress Oxides? If you guys don't remember, Distress Oxides tend to do something more like that where it's a beautiful chalky finish, super matte. But when you throw your uh, gloss on top of it, your ultra gloss, it seals it in so that it's permanent. You're not gonna move it around any and it makes it glossy and just beautiful. This is my dream right here. This is what I love. I love that beautiful 
glossy vibrancy and the Mod Podge does that on top of this. So let's go ahead and move on to another page. Always make sure your page is dry because especially when using this, because this is a all-in-one glue and sealer, so it will attach itself to another page. So I'm just gonna just move right here to my next blank page in my album. Go ahead and just slip this under here. And this time I'm gonna be using Squeeze Lemonade, Twisted Citron, and Mermaid Lagoon. And the reason why I can use these op opposing colors per se in my art journal is because I know that when they combine, they create a pretty secondary color. Um, they're not, I know that they are complementary, even though they're in the opposite families, if that makes any sense. Okay, so again, first thing I'm gonna lay out is my Squeeze Lemonade, and then I'm going to lay out my Mermaid Lagoon, and then I'm gonna lay out my Twisted Citron right in the middle. I'm going to heat it, get it set up, I should go ahead and just hit it one more time with those same colors. So I'm gonna do squeeze lemonade, and this one I'm really gonna make sure that I, I get the coverage that I want. And then I'm going to do Mermaid Lagoon. And finally, I am going to do Twisted Citron. So pretty. I'm gonna heat set it right now just a little bit, get it almost dry, and then I'm gonna hit it with that Mod Podge Ultra. I'm still liking where that's at. I still can see some of that shine starting to get that chalky finish in areas. So I'm just gonna go through and hit it with my Mod Podge Ultra. Let it react a little bit with my distress and look at it go. It's so cool. I just love watching it and the vibrancy starting to come back and whatnot. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll move on to our third color combo. That one is so vibrant. I just love it. I love this technique. Oop, I got a little bit still over there. That's okay, I can just dab it up. Love this technique, right? All right, so let's move on to our third color combo. That's dry and I'm just picking up and going on to the the next blank sheet that I got here, which is gonna be right down here, like so. And for this color combo, we are going to do uh, Worn Lipstick, our color of sin again, Wilted Violet, and Blueprint Sketch. Now, if you followed along, or um, you, you, if you know what color of sin is, tell me in the comment section. Tell me right now, write down, what does that mean? Color of sin. Let's see if you can get it figured out. I know you can do it, because if you've been watching me, you know what the color of sin is, and why it's called the color of sin, I should say. Okay, so worn lipstick is gonna go right up here, and then our next one down is gonna be blue uh, print sketch on the bottom there, because these two colors will make the purple, which will go in the middle. And then in the middle, we're going to do that wilted violet. I'm gonna heat you all set for that first layer. So I'm gonna go in with warm lipstick one more time, make sure I really get that on nice and good. Go in with my blueprint sketch right there. And then finally hit it one more time with my Wilted Violet. And I'm gonna heat set it just a little bit and then add on that Mod Lichen where it's at right now. It's probably wetter than the other, um, the other pages have been at this point, but I'm really liking it. So I'm gonna go on in and just hit it with that Mod Podge one more time. Seal, make it move. Oh, so pretty. Look at how it just all interacts. All right, I'm going to dry this and show you the finished results with this color that combo. One is pretty dry, pretty dry. It's not lovely. I mean, I just really love this effect of the Mod Podge gloss over the Distress Oxides. I just think it's so pretty. You can get the best backgrounds with this and what a lovely color combination that this is going on. All right, so let's move on to the next. And let's do that one. Just 
right here. We'll just pop it on over here. All right, so for this one, I want to do a mustard seed and spiced marmalade and then also candied apple. And so we're gonna do like a yellow, an orange, and a red. And again, these colors all work together, even though they're not part of the same color family. The, well, they are part of the same color family, actually. They're all warm, so they totally work together. I could mix it up on this one, but I really like this way I'm laying it out right now and how it's all looking. I hope you can hear me as I shake through that. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, why fix what ain't broken, right? Okay, so let's lay out the mustard seed first and then the um, candied apple, and then finally the carved pumpkin. So there's the mustard seed, candied apple, carved pumpkin, boom, boom, boom. All right, ready for layer two. Mustard, candied apple, and carved pumpkin. I have the almost pretty dry, so I'm just going to go through with my Gloss Ultra Mod Podge. I do want to remind you guys that in order for you to get this glossy sheen, you definitely want to use the Ultra Mod Podge. And I am really loading this up. Um, you do not need to use as much as I am using by any means of the imagination. Um, you know, I tend to go big or go home. And so um, that's that's kind of how I operate. But um, yeah, and then also on this one, I actually have some of the, it looks like it is the Dina Wakely Gloss Spray that leaked over onto this page. So it's leaving some fun color between these colors. And the cool thing is, is the, the gloss sprays that I used created a uh, cool color tone which is really fun as it pops through the warm background that I'm creating right now. This is just so pretty. And I just love how the Mod Podge Ultra acts as um, an op you know, something to move around the wet ink still. And then it also seals it in and gives it that vibrant shine that isn't that just beautiful you guys ready for your last one your last color combo all right so I'm just going to take and do it right here and then we'll flip through and take a look at all of everything we did so I'm going to be doing faded jeans peeled paint and lucky clover with this one so I'm actually just gonna work from one green down to the blue on this one. And then I might throw in some black sit at the end, just cause I have it laying out. That's peel paint. And we'll do some faded, is this faded jean? Is that the name of it? Faded jeans. And the reason why I like to do it from this and not work my way down is because um, I just like the way that it lays a little bit better. Sometimes if you work from one down, you get too much of an overlay and one, the usually the color in the middle just becomes like the rest of the colors. So like it just blends too much. And by doing the top first, the bottom, and then the middle, it allows the each color to kind of shine through. Ready for layer two. I'm gonna go back just like I've been doing, just repeating that. That was the faded jeans, first one's peel pink. This is Lucky Clover. And then from here, um, I'm gonna dry it a little bit and then I'm gonna throw in some black suits just because I have it out. And I think it might be kind of fun to have it play with these colors. And then once I throw that on, dry it a little bit, I'll go ahead and add in that Mod Podge Ultra. There we go. Just a little bit, just a touch. 
And if it's too much, if I think that it's too dark, I can go on in and I might do that. Just add um, another squirt or two of each color. So I'm going to just go ahead and add that and then there we go. And then I really want to just see this move. It's pretty wet around with the Mod Podge. And again, you know, I like to really cover it and get it to move like so. And it's fun just to let it move around before you try to dry it. But as you can tell, it's like all the colors get super vibrant and so pretty as we let it set up. I just love this little technique that I created and it's so fun. All right, let me dry it. We'll show you that one turned out so awesome. All right, I'm going to clean up my workspace just for a minute and flip the book and we'll go through and take a look at each of these a little bit more. Guys, this created some beautiful backgrounds. I am so, aw I am just like in awe of this. Um, yeah, these, can you believe that Distress Oxide can end up looking like this? Isn't that just beautiful? So this is the first one that we did with um, the pink and then like the purple and then the seedless or the blue and the seedless preserve. So pretty. And then this is the second one that we did with that squeeze lemonade, tw twisted citron, and I believe this was mermaid, I think. I'm not looking at them as I go. Mermaid Lagoon. How pretty. And then this one is um, Worn Lipstick, Blueprint Sketch, and Wilted Violet. So gorgeous. I'm just loving this. And then we have Mustard Seed, Carved Pumpkin, Candied Apple. And then last but not least, Peeled Paint, Lucky Clover, Faded Jeans with a little bit of that black suit. So, why don't you tell me which color combination is your favorite? Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope that you consider doing so. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to find an answer for you. If I don't know, I always try to answer. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have anyone who is a distress oxide fan, share this video because this is a new way to use it. And who would have thought that you could create shine and vibrancy with distress oxides? Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.